Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Wherever you are on our most amazing planet. Yep. The handsome man sitting next to me, which you probably can't see because we aren't releasing this Zoom video with uh, visuals video. just yet, is Shia. Well, hello. And I'm Ariel. And that's collectively the cane. We do finish each other's sentences, so be warned. Yes, and if it disturbs you... Be warned. Be warned. <laughs> yes. Uh, we're going to talk today about enlightenment, I've been told. And chances are what we'll really do is talk around enlightenment. We can talk about it, but it's very so challenging subject to try to have be experiential. So the best way to talk about enlightenment is through listening. See, we all have an idea of what things are. So if we say enlightenment, you have a mental image show up of what you believe enlightenment to look like. It may be sitting cross-legged with your fingers together saying, um, but that's not enlightenment. That's sitting cross-legged with your fingers together saying, um. True listening allows you to access the current moment of your life. True listening happens when you don't pass what's being said through what you already believe to be true or already know. It's about discovering how to be innocent, how to have an opened mind to possibilities outside what you already believe to be true. And how you do that is an interesting phenomenon. It's you've got to intentionally abstain from talking to yourself about what's being said. Because if you start talking to yourself about what's being said, like, oh, I know this, I've read this, I've heard this, I, I saw a, a movie about this once, you'll never hear what we're saying. You'll hear what you're saying about what we're saying. So it's been an interesting phenomena. As Shia is speaking, I keep having these these like blossomings of ideas and I have to keep letting, well, I don't have to, but I have kept letting them go in order to hear what he says, not only the essence of what he has to say, but the particulars. Because as you know, we uh, have done this radio show for many years. Well, it's now called a podcast. It was a radio show, show on the internet, it. but it's been over 14 years that we've been doing this. So we talk about similar things and I like similar <laughs> themes many times, but each moment is individual and new if you're here for it. Yeah, like I don't ever think I've said that thing about innocence. Mm -hmm. But it takes a willingness to not know, a willingness to discover what is rather than what you believe to be true. And that is so hard for many of us because we think if we don't know something, it says something about our intelligence rather than we just don't know something. And now look, you know everything you know. You know, you clearly know everything you know. And you even know everything you know you don't know. Like I guarantee you, most people listening know that they don't know how to speak Swahili. However, there is a universe of things that you don't even know you don't know because they're outside your reality. Our reality is built on the agreement of the culture we grew up in. And so, we see what the culture sees and we don't see what isn't part of that cultural, mm, what would be a good word, matrix, matrix mm. if you will, uh, it, that, that the essence of what the culture is built in, the paradigm through which the culture views existence. And so 
we are arrogant. We think we know everything there is to know. I remember when I was about five or six years old, I had this thought, how can anybody invent anything new when I know everything there is to know already? That may be familiar for some of you. Well, certainly as I was growing up, uh, if a teacher was asking for, I recall one teacher in particular, who was asking for volunteers to answer a question. And I answered the question and I answered it inaccurately. And he made such fun of me. I had the same, I had a different teacher. Her name is, was Miss Jennings. It was in second grade. And she asked who knew how to cook. And I said, I can make eggs. Well, in my family, you made breakfast and you made eggs. You didn't prepare. So I was severely chastised for using the wrong word. So never forgot it. I'm 80 years old. Then I was probably seven or eight, and it's still indelibly in there. So do I, not talk in front of groups. I have a feeling that Shia and my experience is not uh, singular. It mirrors other people's. And I also have a feeling that most of us have been trained to guard, edit what we have to say and defend ourselves and- Second guess what we said that we could have said it differently, should have said it differently. And, and you see enlightenment is an allowing of you to be exactly as you are. And exactly as you're not. And do what you do and don't do what you didn't do. And realize that the moment is perfect and you can't be different than you are in the current moment of your life. So there's no stress. It's not about achieving or acquiring. It's about setting, settling into what already is perfect. That would be you. And I have a suggestion for you today. I know that's hard to hear. Yes, I, here's my suggestion. I know that you tune into this podcast because it has value and you like it or it calms you down or for whatever your set of reasons are. But let's have today be an exploration into the brilliance of you. Shai had just said something in my hearing that was brilliant and expansive and hearing it touched me. Uh, but you might have to remind me what it was because it's whatever, gone now. No, good. Uh, it's gone for me too. But if uh, I hold it that I'm here to listen to him espouse brilliance, I'll miss my own. Same for you. So I suggest that you hold yourself as perfect, which is what you were talking about. Uh, perfect yes. the way you are. And I added perfect the way you're not. Because today, um, we're recording this in the middle of the day. And uh, today, I felt ill. So there, You are perfectly ill. Uh, so it's like the way I am ill, but also the way I'm not, which is I am not feeling energetic. So there was the allowing for what is as opposed to striving for what I think would be a better me. Yes. Shall we take our first guest? Yes, let's. <clears throat> All right, let's have her, the lovely Uli, hi. Hello guys, this is Uli speaking. Hi. Where are you speaking to us from Uli? Uh, I am outside of Cologne in Germany. It's wow. a little small town outside of Cologne. Welcome to being here. Yes. Yeah, thanks for having me. Ah, pleasure. <laughs> I um, I do have a question that's against, to myself, against the backdrop of enlightenment seems so trivial that I'm, I was almost reluctant to ask, but it's something that is, is happening in my life right now, so I thought I'd ask anyway. And, uh, that's great. <laughs> How can a question you have about your life be trivial? Be trivial. Um, because it, it actually is about my website. So it's 
my business okay. website. Um, so before you ask the question, yes, it's let's say you have a certain amount of brain space. It's not actually hard a, drive. Uh, your mental hard drive. Uh, and if it's taken up with this concern, then your ability to see the world around you, feel things when you touch, you're, you, you go and you're having a conversation with your husband or your kids ask you a question and your mind keeps being diverted to that triviality, it is no longer trivial. Right. Yeah. So what's your question? Yeah. Yeah. So the question is, I am uh, building or relaunching the website of my of my agency, of my, my business that I run. And I've been wanting to do that for a long time. And now I'm, I'm, I'm doing it. I have hired uh, two different agencies, one for public relations and one for web design. They to, to support me uh, in implementing the website and in consulting me. And I and it, it worked quite well at the beginning, but now I'm feeling that I'm hitting, I'm hitting the places where I'm insecure in that process. And I'm, and I'm finding it very difficult to make, to make decisions about how things should be. And wherever I go, it, it always seems like, no, that's not the solution. That's not the solution and that doesn't work either. And whenever that happens, I get suspicious about myself because it's like there is no solution to it. it has to, to do with me. Am I making sense? Yes, <laughs> there is no solution. So you could give up trying to have a solution and produce a website that you like. One thing is you're going to the end as opposed to being here. So it's not that you're trying to relaunch and create a website. You want it to be successful. You, are, you have uh, ideas about the outcome. What it will do for you, what you hope for it to do for exactly. you. Exactly. Rather than realize that you're doing this for you. That when you look at it, it is color A or color B, please you? Does it represent you? Wear, you, wear, you, you wear glasses. You yes. go to the eye doctor and they do this thing. One, one or, or two. two. Yes. So it's that way with life. You look, you see one or two. Like this, don't like this. Clear, foggy. What You know. Here's the other thing. Yes. Uh, you have hired two types of professionals, website builders and PR professionals. And so you are putting your taste, your sensibility secondary to the experts. That are experts because you say they're experts yes, rather than looking and seeing what you like, what you find attractive. Mm. You know, I'm yeah. not sure uh, what picture has come along with this particular episode of the podcast. I do know that when we create the podcast and we have the title and the description, then I go through photos I have taken because it pleases me, even though there's stock photos out there, and pick something that represents the theme of the show. And sometimes what I do is I pick multiple sets, like two or three for one episode. And then I get on with people who love me, who I love, and I am say, okay, for the Enlightenment show, this picture, this picture, this picture. And I hear them go, oh, you know, it, it, it's like we work together through a medium we love, but they're not the experts. Okay. I'm not the expert. It's a collaborative joy. Somehow, as you're talking about this, I'm not sure where the joy has gone for you. I, I, I feel what what just came up for me is like I, I have the feeling of it has to be unique. It has to be different. It has to be like I don't know, from a different world. Well, like, let me ask you something. Yes. Are you unique? Yes, I guess. 
So if you work well, you hard, <laughs> how many you movies are uh, there that were born the day you were born? Excuse me, I didn't. I, sorry, I was. How can many you say that again? Uli's, how many Uli's were born the day you were born? To your parents. To your parents. <laughs> Only me. That's right. You're unique. Already you're unique. Of the seven or eight billion people on the planet, you're the only one of you. And it's perfect. You couldn't be different. It's all perfect if you let it. But you see, you want an outcome and that's the problem. You have an agenda. Mm -hmm. Your agenda is to make more money and make more money via the internet. Right. And so now your agenda is driving your life to get the right in website rather than have a website and have a life. Mm. You, know, you can forget what's really important called experiencing your love for your kids or your husband, or you can be busy trying to get this website done, which you're not happy with, and then you're never with your husband or your children. You're with your website project, which isn't to your satisfaction. Well, yeah, that's, that's true. That's life backwards, you know? The real magic in being alive is knowing you're alive, not getting lost in a problem that really doesn't exist, that is a creation of your mind. Because you see, the problem is that you want this perfect website and you don't even know what perfect is. Yes, it's true. You know, uh, uh, probably for the last six months or so, maybe a little longer, uh, and we'd had a desire to upgrade our uh, subscription program on our website. It was called the Premium Excellence Club. That felt outdated to us. The colors were outdated. The pictures were outdated. The whole look, the way the site navigated. We just had an idea, oh, we'd like to upgrade it. So we did. It's now Living Made Easy on demand. And it's on demand because people can go in and see the videos on their time frame, 24 seven. There are articles. You can write in questions. We write back answers. And uh, I'm really proud of the visuals of it. I, it came out in a way that represents how the vision I have for what we're up to. But I'm also really clear that the people of interest in that will partake. And I'm not sure we're going to have a whole lot more interest than, than, we, we, already than we already have. Uh, only perhaps I'm excited about it. And when I get excited, people can catch it. They can ignite from my excitement. Your excitement for you, you're enjoying you, you're valuing you. Not is more, a website, though. Is more yeah. attractive than any website. That's right. Not as a website, but being engaged in your life when your daughter speaks to you if you turn and listen to her you've just made your family healthy in that she doesn't feel this she feels listened to and seen and heard but if you are busy in your mind no two things can occupy the same uli at the same time so if you're busy in your mind with this quote problem it's uh, the solution to avoiding intimacy. Mm -hmm. Sad. I like that. Yeah, that's and true. Go back to our earlier scenario about the amount of brain space you have. If we take it, not calling it brain space now, but call it uliism, <laughs> uh, that if there's little pieces of uli chiseled off so you're not fully here, uh, if I start thinking, wow, I, I could really use a simul translator, you're not going to come to mind for me as much as other people because... Just out of your participation in this moment of your life, you become vital to the universe. You become mm. compelling. Yes. Yeah. And worrying about how it's going to turn out is just a waste of the moment. And you only have a certain number of moments, you know, somebody, somewhere I, I heard we have 
like two billion heartbeats, <laughs> something like that. But you I, became I really you became out. really clear about that when your husband got so ill with COVID, and you, he was at that place where you didn't know if he would be alive in the next day or the next week. Yes. But now things have returned a little bit to normal. To normal. Mm. So those desires to get better, do more, be different have taken over. But you can see it's still close enough, Uli, that you can access what's important. What's important without having to have a crisis again. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank You're you. welcome. Thank you. Our pleasure. Thanks. Hey, it's time for the listener feedback spotlight. It's where we get to hear from people in this amazing listenership and transformation community talking about what's happening in their lives. This is Susan from New York City. And one of the byproducts of taking a seminar with Ariel and Shia is I give my brain a break. It's like a spa for my brain and worry disappears. And all of a sudden I'm having fun in my life. Yummy. Do you want to have well-being with consistency? Connect with people all over the world from the comfort of your own home at Ariel and Shire's lively, interactive, living made easy virtual seminars. Join any of their two hour online events or take a deep dive into the magic of being you at a virtual weekend seminar. Come on, let's connect. Find out more and register at transformationmadeeasy.com. We have a couple of upcoming Living Made Easy virtual seminars this Saturday, next Monday. Also, the next weekend seminar we're doing is transformational time and project management. Now, the key word there was transformational because our time and project management is not about A, B, and C priorities. It is not about managing time. It's about transforming and having those things that you've been trying to accomplish, accomplish themselves out of your being there. Now, that's happening May 22nd and 23rd. And you can actually see it from our conversation with Uli that the clearer she gets, the easier it is for her to make choices or know what direction to go, know what she wants, implement what she wants. When you have other agendas at play that you have no clue about, it fogs up this moment. Also, uh, as I mentioned before, our Living Made Easy On Demand subscription program, we just have a couple weeks left in the promotion we're doing. It is a year long uh, subscription. But for people who uh, subscribe between now and May 1st, uh, we are giving an additional month at no charge. And it is an awesome product. If you want to know more about anything we're doing, just go to our website. TransformationMadeEasy.com. Ready for our next guest? I am so ready. All right. Miss Rita. Hi, Ariel. Hi, Shia. Hi. Hi. I'm calling in from Bern, Switzerland. So lovely to have you with us today. Yes. Thanks. Mm. I just mm. listened to the conversation uh, you had with Uli, and yes. I think the answers you gave her were just for me too. <laughs> but anyway, I... Uh, I ask my question. Please. I created an online course about um, speaking with friends and um, uh, related people about death and um, last wishes. And 
then I I sold it on on internet, but I had all the time the the thought: Is it good enough? Um, is it good enough? Yeah. Is yes. It good enough. Yes, it's good enough. <laughs> See, you know, we've written six books, and our first book was the most challenging in that we were trying to edit it at the same time we were writing it. And you can't really write if you're editing what you're saying. And this is very similar to asking yourself, is it good enough? Yeah. You know, it's interesting. Uh, everybody has those kind of conversations. And Shai and I started leading seminars in 1987 or 88, back in there. And in together. the early days, together, yes, we printed uh, a brochures on eight and a half by eleven paper. We folded it in thirds, and then we hand colored um, little stripes on it to add color to it. And we had friends who helped us do it, and that was our early brochures. I have some of those in the uh, file cabinets over there. And it's amazing how the genesis of what we are doing today is expressed in those early writings of ours. Not only was it challenging because we were editing whilst we were writing and we didn't know any better, we were also bringing into being something that hadn't been expressed verbally before. So there was a challenge with it. And everybody, has in them the question, am I enough? Is it enough? Uh, is it good enough? At least I'm assuming they do. Everybody I've ever met does. But when you step outside of that conversation, you can look and see. You know, the truth of the matter is, if you use your eyes, I find your eyes are a tool of enlightenment. If you use your eyes, answers become available to you that, you know, you couldn't see before because you were trying to figure it out through what you know, not look and see what the circumstances are in current time. So when you look, you know whether what you did was good. Sometimes... When we're writing, Rita, I'll look at a paragraph and the pa paragraph will bother me. And I don't know why. And then I'll find a word, a comma, a typo, a something. Other times I'll read something out loud to Shai that we've created and he'll go off. I'll see his eyes go off. And then I know that somewhere in that sentence is something either not well developed, inaccurate, it, it's extraneous. When he leaves, I know that we have more work to do. Okay. I have to say something about- When she says, when I leave, when I follow a thought. thought because then his, his body's here, but his presence goes. So I do have a feeling about your website. And I love- that you worry if it's enough. And I'll tell you why. Because I think people who are looking at death and their last wishes are worried about whether or not they've done enough, whether what they have to say will be enough. Um, and, and so basically, if you can be okay with yourself for having those concerns, you give your clients permission to be fully themselves, concerns and all. And okay with how they live their life. Yeah. Everybody thinks they should have done it differently. What if you've, what if we've all done our lives absolutely perfectly with all those mis quote mistakes that we've made and all the I should haves that we have? What if it all was perfect? Now, of course, it brought us to this moment. So it has to be perfect because this is a perfect moment. 
unless you disagree with the way your life is showing up. Well, it's still a perfect moment. It's just you're disagreeing with it. You know, when you can have compassion for yourself and your diminishing thoughts, when somebody comes to you and they're, they're diminishing themselves, just being in your presence, they can access compassion for themselves for being them. Yes, that, that can I feel when I, um, uh, when I coach someone and, and I, I listen really to, to what they have to, to say or um, what their feeling are. And um, then I, I feel that, that people are uh, more open and, and um, talk about their lives. And they, they feel hurt. Yes, but that's because you listen. Yeah. See, you have trained yourself, coming to our seminars for years, to listen. Yes. That's all we really teach is listening. Because if you truly listen, you get pulled into the current moment. And when you get pulled into the current moment, the story, the narrative about why you're deficient disappears. And then you are suddenly complete, whole, perfect. You're a being, not a problem. Yes. And that happens as you get in the moment and listening gets you there. So you've trained yourself. You know, congratulations. That's a credit to you. Thank you. Yes, it's it's a really a great thing. Um, I've learned from you to to listen to to people. Maybe that's one thing um, when when I sell um, product and not thousands of people answer and and tell me oh it was so good then <laughs> I, uh, I think well maybe it's not good enough of course uh, you know what was fun I, 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 you just had me flash on this in um early february i told shy we had podcasts to do and I sat him down here and actually it was a surprise birthday party for him for his 80th birthday and and different people spoke including people he never would have guessed would be there or people he never really realized he touched you have no clue who you touch it all goes through the filter of your self idea of you and yes. um, I, I mean I'm okay but I'm not exceptional I, I had such a funny moment. Our friend Madhu, whose uh, family uh, came from India, he's of Indian extraction, clearly, I uh, said, you know, Shia, uh, I love you. Before I met you, I thought uh, gurus could only be Indian. <laughs> and it was just the sweetest thing. Uh, you know, you have ideas of what success looks like and you filter what comes and you have to realize you have a niche market and not everybody's up for looking at yeah. loss and grief and their last wishes. Yeah. And I, I just one other thing early in our business, we had an acquaintance who told us stop wishing for a fast build, build a, 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 a company that you're proud of not one that you suck in a lot of people that you have no desire to work with. And it's been lovely. Yeah, really, you know. Because uh, look, we have you. That's right. Thank you. You know, yeah. and then we, anytime somebody's I'm, a guest on our show, we get to genuinely be delighted to be with you. That's right.
Yes, yes, that's that's really um, good. My my clients, I I have um, I love to to work with them, and also my my um, classes. I I love really what I I'm doing. And to the mind, it'll never be enough. You'll never have enough clients, never have enough success. You, no, see, doesn't matter how successful you are, the mind is an insatiable machine. It cannot be satisfied. Insatiable means can't be satisfied. Well, our minds cannot be satisfied, but we human beings can be when we're here, when we're with our experience of living in each moment, rather than our thoughts about some future successes. You know, and uh, inherent in your questions and also in Uli's is that desire most of us have to manipulate the circumstances to turn out the way we want rather than to fully express ourselves and say, here I am, this is what I have to offer. Do you fit with me? Would you like to be with me? As opposed to try to manipulate people to want to be with you. Yes, I and then love people that. Are with you, it's very sad. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Well, that's, you see, I get paid to live my life the way I am not to manipulate or try to bend myself into some acceptable form for everybody. And, and by, I'm not acceptable to everybody, but there are some people who will find what I have to say powerful and useful in them discovering their truth, their reality, their life. Like me, because it wasn't that long ago we were putting together that website we were putting together the new portal i was looking at the colors i was looking at the layout i was handling all the details and somewhere along the line entered a degree of stress and shia looked at me and said you're trying to manipulate to make people like it or manipulate to get clients and that will only cause you stress and it was like it dropped me back into the moment. So listening is key. Yes, really. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so Thank much. You. Thanks for such having me. Day. Yeah, you're such a pleasure. Really. Oh, wow. If you want to share Uli and Rita's greatness with people, um, feel free to leave a review on some of your uh um, favorite podcast apps or encourage friends to subscribe. Also, if you want to be a guest like Rita just did or uh, have a listener's spotlight like you heard in the middle of the show, you can go to our website, transformationmadeeasy.com forward slash being here and you can find out how. Next week's podcast is now. Now. Now what? <laughs> so come join us. We'll be back next week. So come on back. And don't miss being here. That's right. Bye.